We had a great suggestion for a tutorial last week in the comments, and that is to go through a full workflow of how to go from a color portrait to a nice moody black and white portrait. I've got just the picture we're gonna test out. We're gonna dive into Lightroom, but again, all of these techniques are absolutely applicable in something like Capture One. You can do this in Photoshop. You can do this in all kinds of photo editing software. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, ooh, fresh, photography tutorial. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let's dive into Lightroom, and let's take a look at how we can turn a color portrait into a nice, moody, black and white portrait. We're going to be working with this image here, which was taken on the Sony a7R5. I actually really like it, although the reason I'm using this is that I've made a couple of of small errors with this. So for example, my my right eye, so on the left side of the image, is a little underexposed. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna do some, some little tricks to really make this work the way we want it to work. Obviously, it's quite a nice, colorful portrait. This is just completely unedited. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff. It's actually very easy to turn this into a black and white image, especially in Lightroom. It's, it's very, very straightforward. But there are a few things we're going to do to really make the most of this. And we're really going to utilize some interesting stuff in Lightroom. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of a global edit. That means we're going to go in and actually adjust the whole photograph just as a whole. So using these sliders over on the right, we're going to start by bringing the shadows up just a touch. I don't want it to be too dark. Maybe the highlights down just a touch again. Contrast, I'm going to leave for now. But again, we, we can come back to this if we want to as well. And I'm going to boost the clarity. Now, we're still working in color right now. We don't have to be doing that, but sometimes I like to stay in color just for the first part of the edit. But we're going to dive pretty much straight away over to black and white. And the way we can do that, the best way to do it, some people, I've seen people do it before, where you bring the saturation down to zero. That's not the best way to do it. You want to come up here to where it says treatment, you've got color. We're going to click black and white. That's going to turn this into a black and white image we're going to be able to work from there. Now, I like to edit my black and white images with a lot of contrast, quite a lot of clarity. We're going for a moody look with this one. There's a few things I actually want to do to this image. Now, before we go any further, I want to tidy this up a little bit. So I'm actually going to zoom in on my face. I'm just clicking to do that. There's a couple little reflection marks on my glasses that I think I'm going to get rid of. So we just click on the healing tool here, and this is going to bring out, there's a couple of different types. We're going to try the content aware remove. That's usually pretty good. And we can actually reduce or increase the size of the circle that we're actually using here just with the mouse scroll wheel, which is really easy. I'm just going to click on these little marks here just to get rid of them. And Lightroom should do a pretty good job of working out what I'm trying to do and how to get rid of them. So I think that actually looks pretty good already. Just those little reflection marks. And then I might just tidy up some tiny blemishes on my face, or maybe I'll leave them. Maybe I'll leave them. We can zoom back out. I'm just going to hold space bar and left click. We're zooming back out there. Let's come off that. And I think that looks pretty good, to be honest, in terms of kind of tidying that up. The next thing I want to tidy up is the background. I really want this to be a moody black and white image with pretty much just a black background. And that's very, very straightforward to do, especially in Lightroom now. So we're going to come up here to the masking overlay thing, the masking sort of tab. And we're going to actually click background. That is going to mask the entire background behind our subject. So Lightroom should be able to work that out. There we go. Everything in red is masked. It knows that I'm the subject. So we're able to do that. And we can just bring the exposure down like so. We don't have to go too crazy because if you see on my arm here, I quite like this little sort of rim light. And if we bring this down too much, we lose a little bit of that. So I'm going to bring it down to something like this. We've still got a couple of lights in the background. It's not really the end of the world, but I personally just want to get rid of them for the purposes of this photo. So I'm going to come back into the healing tab here. We're going to go to the clone tool. And I'm just going to use the mouse scroll wheel to make this circle a little bit bigger. And I'm going to draw a nice kind of mask over this light. And as you can see, it's taken, it thinks I want to clone it from here with, I guess, a low exposure is going to make it black anyway, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to drag this up to here. So we're essentially cloning from up here. So it's nice and sort of dark. I'm going to do the same thing over here for this light and it should be absolutely fine. There we go. And I'm just going to drag this so that it's in a nice dark area. Brilliant. And there we go. We've now got a nice dark background with just our subject, which of course is me. So it seems weird to call myself 
my subject. But anyway, we've got a nice dark background behind me. So we're, we're, we're coming along quite nicely to where I want to be. So back to the sort of global editing, I am now just going to increase the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to increase the clarity a touch as well. And something I like to do, especially with black and white, I'm going to come over to the left hand side of Lightroom here, where we've got all the sort of different presets. And there's actually a preset kind of category style black and white. And I like mousing over some of these to give you a little bit of a an idea of some things you could do. I quite like this one, BW10. That's quite nice. If we click on that, we can then reduce the amount because I think it's probably a bit much. But I think that looks pretty good. Bring that clarity back up a little bit because the presets brought that down. I quite like I quite like the look of that. Now, we've got some issues, like I said at the beginning of this video, where, for example, part of my face is a little too underexposed. So here's what we're going to do to that. We're going to go up to the masking tab. We're going to create a new mask radial gradient and we're going to draw that kind of kind of over half of my face like that but as you can see it's spilling onto the rest of the image and we don't want it to be lightening that background back up so i'm going to right click on this mask mask 2 i'm going to click intersect mask with select subject and what that's going to do is only apply this radial gradient which is nice and feathered onto the subject so you can see there we've now got this feathered mask on the subject which is me feathered across my face absolutely ideal we can now bring that exposure up a little bit. We can bring maybe the shadows up a little bit. Maybe the highlights down just a touch so it's not crazy blown out. And let's let's turn that mask off and then back on. Look how much of a, of a difference that is making. Yes, I like that a lot. So great, that's actually worked out really well. Now we're gonna go ahead and do another create new mask. We're gonna select people. And this is a really, really useful tool in Lightroom. We've actually done a tutorial all about this and how easy it makes editing portraits, but this is gonna select all the people in the photo. So in this case, of course, it's just me. We can actually mouse over it here. I'm gonna select myself, and then it allows me to mask out all these different elements of the person. So in this case, I want to actually mask out my eyes. So the whites of my eyes here, and then the iris and the pupil. I think that's probably that's probably fine. You could do the facial skin, the body skin. There's lots you can do. I think for now, we're going to just do those two and we're going to click create two separate masks. We're going to make sure that's ticked on. Let's click create mask. This is so useful. So now we can bring the exposure up on the whites of my eyes. Not too much. We don't want this to look crazy. We're going to go mask four, which is the iris and the pupils. We're going to bring the exposure up on that. And for this one, let's bring the clarity up a bit as well. That looks pretty good. I really like that actually. We're gonna do one more new mask, this time a brush. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna hold space bar and left click to zoom in. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop this over the eyes as a whole. And this one, I'm just gonna bring that clarity up and I'm gonna bring the dehaze down a little bit. Now you don't wanna go too crazy with this. I'll show you what happens if you do. It starts to look like you're in some kind of sci-fi film. That's not the effect. It's quite cool, but it's not the effect we want to go for today. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to bring that down, but in a way that isn't too crazy. Uh, and I think that looks pretty good. Now, a big part of what is making this photo is the masks, right? And you can see how much of an effect they're having by going onto the masking panel here. You've got all your masks and up on the top left, you can just click and hold on this little eye icon. So let's click and hold on that. That's what the photo looks like without the masks. That's what it looks like with the masks. So it's making quite a big difference, especially to my face, but obviously, of course, that background as well. And we can, of course, also press the backslash key on the keyboard to see it before. This is where we started and after, or in fact, we can press Y to see a side by side of before and after. And the last thing I might want to do is try and try and work with these little shadows that are being caused by my glasses. So where the light is, which is kind of a little bit similar to how I've got it now sort of up here. It's casting that shadow onto my face because of the glasses. There's a couple of ways we could deal with this. We could go into Photoshop. It's very, very easy in Photoshop to actually deal with this. We could clone stamp this in Lightroom. But instead, you know what? I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go create new mask. I'm going to do the brush. And I'm actually just going to use a very small brush overlay and just, just do this. So let's see, let's see how this goes, right? It takes a little bit of finessing. It's uh, it's a little bit of a trial and error kind of thing. So we've done that. I, I think we've fairly successfully there covered those shadows. And what we're going to do is we're just going to gently 
raise that exposure. We're going to bring the contrast down a little bit and we're going to bring the shadows up quite a bit as well. Let's hold spacebar and left click to zoom out. I think we've done a pretty good job there. If we left click to turn this mask six off, which we can do by just left clicking this little eye here, that was what it was like before we did that. And this is what it's like afterwards. Now, it's great. You can just go in and adjust how much you've affected this. It might be that, you know, I'm not going to get rid of these shadows doing this, but I've certainly minimized them quite a lot. I think that's that's a pretty good way of, of minimizing that. Again, I could go into Photoshop and just instantly get rid of it pretty much. It would be it'd be so easy. But I think it's nice to, to keep it in Lightroom, right? And you could also do this in Capture One. You could do this in all kinds of photo editing software. So I think, I think it's a useful thing to kind of be able to do and, and, and be able to do reasonably effectively like this. And there we go. That's a pretty kind of moody black and white portrait. I quite like it. I'm quite pleased with the results. Now, I'd love to know if there's something you would have done differently. Would you have stopped before we went so far, maybe with the eyes? Would you have done something differently with those shadows? Would you have just approached the whole thing differently? Do you prefer a less contrasty black and white image? I'd love to know. Let me down in the comments. That's always super interesting. We had some great suggestions last week in the comments as well for future Tutorial Tuesdays, which is always amazing because I love to make the stuff you guys actually want to see. So if there's any more suggestions, let me know in the comments. I've already got some in the bag from last week, which we're definitely going to get to. But oh, oh, I do love a nice fresh suggestion. So let me know in the comments, that's ideal. Otherwise, all that's left for me to say is you can check out a full list of all the kit that we use for this photo, for this video, everything down in the description. Like I say, this photo was taken on the A7R5, which is a lovely, lovely camera. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new stuff all the time. I will see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.